Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our world situation report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the US, it is Monday, March 18th, 2024. In Nigeria, a local community is protesting their government. They say they are losing their homes and their way of life. And in Eastern Uganda, we're getting a closer look at a nearby school. Learn more about their dream of providing an education to help the children. In the New Earth, we're exploring the power behind pure essential oils, including the different ways the oil can be applied. We were told they were just weeds, but did you know dandelions have many medicinal and nutritional benefits? Learn more about their ability to boost energy and prevent disease. This is Kaylin Gipp, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. In a Nigerian local community, residents are tragically losing their homes and means of living. UNN field messenger Chuck Woody Kingsley sheds light on their struggles. Hi everyone, this is UNN field messenger Chuck Woody Kingsley. Reporting from Iboland, the southeast of Nigeria. The people of Nchatanchanike of Enugu State of Nigeria are being chased out of their community by the Enugu State government. Their houses and farm lands are being demolished in this harsh economic situation of Nigeria. In this protest, they are calling on the federal government to intervene and call their state governor to order. This man in front of his house is a retired civil servant who served the government for 35 years. And while he was serving, there was housing contributions which they were making and it was being deducted from their monthly salaries. But the house was not given to them. According to him, he had retired for the past 11 years and government never gave him the house which he was making monthly payments for, nor did he receive his retirement gratuity. And now he is blind, but the little house which he struggled to build has been marked for demolition and many other houses of his kinsmen were also marked for demolition and they were given seven days to vacate, to vacate their ancestral homes. He said there is so much hunger in Nigeria, but their governor has destroyed all their cassava farms. This is Chukudi Kingsley, UNN. Bye. Next, we visit a local school in eastern Uganda, providing children with convenient access to education right in their communities. UNN field messenger Mwanda Michael interviews the founder of the school. Hey, Mwanda Michael, you any field messenger, I have come across a school called Bright Future Primary School in, in Rumuli. That is the Utagaya sub-county, Jinja district. And that is the sign post, as you can see. Uh, it's, uh, this is the gate looks somehow better than the other schools that have been coming across. They have water, children can access safe water at the campus, and as you can see, they take water direct as it is being pumped with another one. You can see, they are just enjoying water at the school. This one is like a game, but they enjoy it. So, so, those are classes. The founder of this bright future, 
is called Mr. Ali Enka Moses. Moses. Mm. Tell me about the dream that you had for this community. Mm, thank you so much. When we started this school in 2008, mm. so this place here, that is the Muri Children's Center, mm. has no schools. Mm. And the children were moving a longer distance from here to our primary school. Mm. This side is B2D, that is like Dima. Mm. So we thought, we thought it was that no, let us build this school around here and we help the community. Mm. And there are so many people who are orphans. Mm. There are some people who are helpless. Yes. There are some men who abandon their families. So we said that no, let us come up with this. For how long have you been in existence? From 2008 up to date. People want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. Don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running at unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmond from Ghana. I am Claudio from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with the electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature, and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Living in the new earth is all about returning to a more natural way of life. And that includes how we improve our state of mind as well as our physical bodies. Essential oils can balance hormones, boost immunity, support digestion, and improve mood as well as many other things. So what are some of the ways essential oils can be used? Stephanie Ariel is a certified aromatherapist, author and owner of Artisan Aromatics, a scent design company. So today we are back and talking about essential oils. Of course, Stephanie is joining us again. Stephanie, I'd love to learn more about how we can use essential oils. Um, we may be using them in our own homes in different ways. So for someone who is new to this and maybe wants to get started, what are some different ways you can use essential oils? There are so many ways to use essential oils. I mean, you can just start as simply as having a roller ball like this that you use at nighttime for sleep. So okay. I have a sleep remedy, you just inhale it, put it on the back of your hand and then breathe it in as you go to sleep. So that's kind of an entry level way to start with essential oils. Get a roller ball of a remedy, some kind of blend that you like. You can yeah. also invest in a diffuser and they range anywhere from $30 to a couple hundred. And um, what this does is you can diffuse the oil in water into the air and just have that ambient scent all around your home. So that is probably the next common way that people use them. There's also things like aromatherapy jewelry. You know, this is a bracelet that has a little pad inside, like a locket, and you can drop the essential oil. You can wear, we have necklaces, um, bracelets, so you can wear the essential oil. Oh, wow. Um, I've never seen that before. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's cool. why when you're traveling, you know, you're stuck on a center seat on an airplane and you just want to block yeah. all those scents. <laughs> you know, you have your necklace and it's just like a little aromatic protection, I call it. 
Um, yeah. Essential oils are typically sold in a pure bottle. So this is undiluted, pure essential oil that you would drop into a diffuser. Typically, you don't put it directly on the skin. Um, some of the more gentle oils from flowers or citrus oils, I do put in the palm of my hand um, and then rub them and just breathe it in. But there are some strong oils like clove or cinnamon or peppermint that you would never want touching your skin. They can burn. So um, what we do advise is that a pure essential oil you diffuse typically or you dilute. Okay. So you could also get a pure bottle of essential oil and you could add a teaspoon to an eight ounce bottle of carrier oil. So that would be a vegetable oil like avocado oil, sunflower oil, doesn't really matter, coconut oil, any kind of oil mm -hmm. works. And then you shake it up and then you have a diluted oil that is perfectly safe to put on the skin. So you can make a um, body oil that you use every morning. You're getting those ar aromatherapeutic benefits. You can make a bath oil that way, a massage oil. So that's another really common way. You know, the way I got into essential oils was actually through crafting. So making soaps and lotions and um, mm. body scrubs, salt scrubs, face scrubs. So you can also make products with essential oils. You know, avoid all the chemicals and just make those body care, skin care products yourself with essential oils. So that is another way. And, um, you know, really you can, like I said, just use a rollerball at night for sleep, or you could use them all day long, morning to night. And I'm more in that category. You know, I've got my morning self massage oils with essential oils. I'm diffusing. I've got the rollerballs in my pocket. As I go You've got the whole, whole sleep. shebang going on at your place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's up to you how much you want to dive in or how just simple you want to keep it. So yes. those are, those are the most common ways for sure. And then one thing I'll say before we move on from that is also, the water from distilling to get an essential oil is called a hydrosol or a distillate water or flower water. Okay. And so this is a rosemary one. And so you have the rosemary essential oil that's very concentrated and you might diffuse it or using it in a healing remedy. And then you have the water, which is very delicate and you can spray it right on your face. You can use it as a room mm -hmm. spray, but typically people use it on their face. They want to inhale it because it has all the chemical uh, therapeutic benefits of the essential oil. So look for floral waters as well as you do your aromatherapy journey. So how do you know when you receive an essential oil, how do you know how concentrated it is in order to be able to do some of the things we talked about? Because like you said, some of these are very concentrated. You're gonna need to mix it with oil, mix it with water or something like that to dilute it. Should it say on the label or how do we know how much it needs to be diluted in order to do some of these things? Yeah, well, it should definitely say on the label that it's pure and undiluted. And okay. you want to, the number one thing you want to do is make sure that you're buying from a reputable seller. Because as essential oils have really saturated our communities and they're all over, I have seen an uptick over compared to 10 years ago, 20 years ago when I started in literally synthetic oils that are being sold online as essential oils when they're not. And I know they're not from the price because they're selling a bottle of rose oil that should literally cost a hundred dollars and they're selling it for 10. So, right. and you can, I can also smell it and smell that it's synthetic. It's made overseas mm -hmm. and there, there's a lot of profit for some people in essential oils. So number one, make sure you're buying from a reputable seller. And how do you know if they're reputable? They're going to offer what's called a GCMS report. And what that is, it's a, a chromatography report where it goes to a lab, a third party tested lab that will verify the chemical profile of the oil and verify that it's a true oil. So if you buy from a grocery store or sort of you just pick it off the shelf somewhere, they're not going to have that report and you're not going to know that it's a genuine essential oil. Dandelions, often seen as mere weeds, are actually a powerhouse of nutritional and medicinal benefits that bloom in early spring. Their bitter taste kickstarts our body's detoxification process, cleansing blood and flushing out toxins from organs like the liver, spleen, and lymphatic system. Unlike many plants, every part of the dandelion from root to flower holds unique benefits. The flowers gently cleanse the body's organs while the leaves purify blood and aid circulation. The stems target dense organs by expelling unneeded bile and the roots provide deep organ detoxification. 
Dandelions also leave behind essential nutrients such as vitamins A and B, manganese, iodine, and iron, boosting energy and preventing diseases. This makes dandelions a natural detox agent and a nutritional supplement that supports overall health, proving that this common backyard plant is a multifaceted healer for both body and spirit. Retreats have become increasingly popular in recent years as a way for individuals to take a break from their busy lives and focus on self-care and personal growth. Retreats come in all shapes and forms and are typically located in peaceful and scenic areas where participants can fully immerse themselves in their surroundings. They are beneficial with their holistic approach to wellness, focusing on physical, mental, and spiritual health. Activities like yoga and meditation reduce stress and boost self-awareness. Spiritual growth is supported through workshops, promoting personal transformation. Digital detox retreats are gaining popularity as more and more people recognize the benefits of unplugging from technology, allowing participants to reconnect with nature and themselves. Exploring the natural beauty and diversity of our planet fills us with a sense of wonder and offers a profound appreciation for the myriad forms of life that share it with us. Planet Earth offers endless opportunities for inspiration and discovery, whether it's marveling at the intricate ecosystems within a rainforest or observing the captivating flight of starlings as seen here. Witnessing the flight of the starlings can feel like watching a spectacular ballet in the sky. These amazing birds perform a breathtaking natural phenomenon with thousands moving in a synchronized fluid motion that creates an ever-changing pattern in the sky. The birds' collective movements create organic shapes ranging from serene to intensely dramatic. Scientists believe starlings often swarm when predatory birds are nearby, suggesting that their flocking behavior is a defense strategy. As the flock moves in unison, each bird seamlessly adjusts its path to match those around it, resulting in sweeping motions and shapes in the sky. The sight of such perfect connection between each starling serves as a reminder to appreciate the world's wonders around us. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Hill Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta in Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Now, a look at regional stories around the world. In Slovakia, protests erupt after the government reveals plans to restructure the country's public broadcasting system. Could their efforts threaten democracy and free speech? After more than two decades, the Congo has reinstated the death penalty. This change specifically targets people accused of treason, war crimes, and insurgency. A widespread power outage has hit Cuba impacting most of the entire nation. The country is facing its most severe economic crisis in decades. And in Sacramento, California, 200 families facing poverty and child welfare are given hundreds of dollars per month with no strings attached.
In Bratislava, Slovakia, thousands have taken to the streets to protest against the recent government proposal to revamp the country's public broadcasting system. Critics argue these changes would shift the Slovak public television and radio under governmental control, essentially transforming it into a propaganda tool. This move is seen as a threat to democracy and freedom of expression in Slovakia. The government's plan involves replacing the current broadcaster, RTVs, with a new organization governed by a council, members of which would be nominated by the government and parliament. This council would also have the authority to dismiss the director without any justification. The reform has drawn criticism from both local and international observers, highlighting concerns about Slovakia's democratic integrity. Italy's government is proposing laws that could double prison sentences for inmates engaging in passive resistance, such as refusing to work or eat. Critics argue Italy's real prison issue lies in overcrowding and understaffing, which hinders inmates' access to essential services and leads to widespread psychological problems and low morale. The proposed bill, which also applies to migrant reception centers, uniquely criminalizes passive resistance with penalties up to eight years, a notion absent in other Western legal systems. Italy currently struggles with prison populations exceeding official capacity by 10,000 and a significant guard shortfall aggravating an already dire situation. Critics and rights advocates warn the bill's measures could further congest courts and worsen overcrowding while undermining prisoners' rights and the principle of legitimate protest. The UK government has introduced a proposed legislation requiring banks to provide customers with a three-month notice and a detailed reason before terminating their accounts. This move comes in response to concerns over accounts closed for political reasons. The new draft law, currently open for public feedback, aims to protect individuals' rights to express their political views without the fear of financial repercussions. Under the new regulations, banks will also be prohibited from including terms in contracts that would allow them to bypass these rules. Exemptions are made for closures due to concerns related to anti-money laundering and terrorist financing where no notice or explanation is required. The legislation is anticipated to receive parliamentary approval by the upcoming summer and be implemented shortly after. Germany's government has a plan to address pension challenges without raising retirement ages or contributions. It involves borrowing 12 billion euros or $13 billion for stock market investments to strengthen the pension fund. Managed by an independent Generation Capital Foundation, the diversified global portfolio targets high returns for the statutory pension plan. Critics worry about future burdens on employees due to rising contribution rates and question the plan's profitability without increasing debt. The government's strategy aims to use capital market opportunities while maintaining a safety buffer against risks. This initiative is part of an ongoing debate on pension system sustainability, with proposals including broader contribution mandates and addressing pension disparities, especially for women. In a shocking trend, artificial intelligence is being used to create fake nude images targeting mainly women. An increasing number of these cases are popping up across Europe. The practice, known as deep fake, uses AI to create or alter content with disturbing realism. Victims often discover these violations through anonymous communications, leaving them feeling exposed and violated. This cyber manipulation has intensified fears of personal image misuse, including profitable distribution, damaging victims' reputations. 
Despite efforts, legal and digital platforms are slow to address this cyber violence issue. Recent studies show an alarming rise in the creation and distribution of pornographic deep fakes, with a staggering 550% increase in such content since, since 2019. Despite stricter European directives on cyber violence, victims are hoping for more proactive measures and effective support from the digital world and public authorities to stop this growing violation. An internet outage has disrupted daily life across West and Central Africa this week, affecting millions. The outage traced back to a severed submarine cable system operated by West African data center and connectivity provider Main One and left numerous individuals and businesses without internet access. Main One attributed the break occurring in the Atlantic Ocean near Ivory Coast to natural underwater seismic activity and dismissed any human activities as potential causes. Main One, serving regions including Nigeria, Ghana, and Ivory Coast, is working to repair the cable and restore service swiftly. Congo has reinstated the death penalty after a suspension lasting more than two decades. This decision comes as a response to the increasing terror and displacement caused by armed conflicts, particularly in eastern Congo, where the M23 rebel group has been a significant force of unrest. With territories under siege and communities forced to flee, the reinstatement targets those involved in treason, war crimes, and insurgency, extending even to military personnel joining enemy forces. However, the move has drawn sharp criticism from human rights organizations, highlighting concerns over its alignment with the country's constitution and its effectiveness in restoring peace. Bangalore, India's IT hub, is facing an intense water crisis affecting millions of its residents. The crisis is aggravated by an unusually hot early year and insufficient rainfall. With the groundwater depleting, more than half of the city's bore wells have dried up, forcing reliance on expensive water tankers. Experts point to Bangalore's rapid growth insufficient infrastructure and environmental changes as key factors behind this crisis. Solutions such as enhancing the city's green cover, rainwater harvesting and replenishing lakes are suggested to avert future crises. Meanwhile, residents resort to rationing and paying high prices for water, with some contemplating temporary relocation if conditions worsen. In Japan, the nation's major companies have committed to a 5.28 percentage wage increase for 2024, marking the largest rise in more than three decades. This decision is expected to rejuvenate the Japanese economy, particularly after narrowing, uh, narrowly avoiding recession last year. Analysts believe these hikes exceeding expectations could lead to positive real wages by mid-2024 offering households more spending power. The move is seen as a necessary step toward addressing income inequality and the challenges posed by inflation and labor shortages. Part-time workers, often the most vulnerable, are set to enjoy a 6% increase in their wages, signaling a notable shift toward economic recovery and enhanced living standards for millions. This wage growth initiative, driven by both large corporations and supported by the government, aims to trickle down to smaller firms, impacting a vast majority of the Japanese workforce. In the Philippines, authorities have rescued more than 650 individuals from a large-scale scam operation posing as an online gambling company. Victims, lured under false job pretenses, were forced to participate in criminal activities, ranging from love scams to cryptocurrency fraud. The operation preyed on young, tech-savvy individuals, exploiting them to deceive victims across borders, primarily targeting Chinese nationals. 
The scam involved creating false romantic narratives to manipulate victims into financial schemes. The rescue operation was initiated based on a tip from a Vietnamese escapee who revealed appalling conditions, including instances of torture and electrocution. This incident highlights a growing concern in Southeast Asia over scam centers where individuals are coerced into criminal activities. Cuba is currently experiencing widespread power outages affecting large parts of the country, including the capital. The blackout started late Friday and continued throughout the weekend, impacting almost the entire nation. These disruptions have been linked to ongoing maintenance at a key power plant and are worsened by a severe fuel shortage, essential for electricity generation. Fuel prices have surged by more than 400 percent, further straining the situation. The country is enduring its most severe economic challenge in decades, attributed to the global pandemic effects, increased international sanctions, and longstanding economic issues. Officials expect a slight improvement in the power situation, though securing enough oil imports will continue to pose challenges. Residents are facing significant hardships, including fuel and basic goods shortages, despite government efforts to subsidize costs. In the U.S., the National Association of Realtors settled a lawsuit for $418 million and agreed to overhaul the traditional rules around real estate commissions. The agreement, pending court approval, would abolish longstanding commission rules, facilitating easier negotiations on fees or the option for buyers to bypass agents altogether. This could significantly lower sales commissions, impacting both home buyers and real estate agents. Analysts predict a 25 to 50 percent drop in commissions, potentially amounting to thousands of dollars in savings for American families, especially beneficial amidst rising inflation and housing prices. However, the change also threatens the income of real estate brokers, who currently earn significantly above the national average. The reform, set to take effect in mid-July, aimed to make home buying more affordable and lower barriers for many Americans entering the housing market. SpaceX, the global satellite leader, is developing a state-of-the-art spy satellite system, and they're calling it StarShield. This secretive $1.8 billion project in collaboration with the National Reconnaissance Office aims to deploy hundreds of Earth imaging satellites capable of operating in low orbit. StarShield is designed for U.S. intelligence and military applications, potentially enhancing the U.S. government's capability to monitor activities worldwide with unprecedented coverage and speed. While the exact launch date of this new satellite network remains undisclosed, prototypes have been in orbit since 2020. The move has prompted mixed reactions, emphasizing the need for a balance between security and privacy rights. Across the United States, families are struggling with the financial aftermath of Medicaid's estate recovery programs. These policies, which can lead to liens being placed on homes and demands for repayment of medical expenses, vary significantly from state to state. Reports have highlighted the enormous pressure on families, with some states aggressively pursuing the recovery of costs, not just for long-term care, but also for basic medical services. This has led to situations where individuals already burdened by the emotional toll of losing, losing loved ones to illnesses find themselves facing additional hardships. For some, this includes the devastating prospect of selling family homes to settle Medicaid bills. Critics argue this approach only perpetuates wealth disparities and subjects families to further struggle in times of loss. Sacramento, California has launched a pilot program called Family First Sacramento that will provide $725 monthly to 200 families in need. 
This initiative was unanimously approved by the country's, or the county, I should say, board of directors. It aims to support African American and Native American families with children under five who are disproportionately impacted by poverty and the child welfare system. Reducing the financial burden on these communities enables them to cover essential expenses, such as food, housing, transportation, healthcare, and education. The families will be selected through a lottery system with payouts beginning in July. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. That's also where you'll find our UNN meme of the day, a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all of our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website at unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. And that wraps up today's news update. We do not have a world situation report for you today. Due to tomorrow's spring equinox events, including some preset time-released events from negative entities and some deep state, have been in full swing since Friday. Kim will give us a full update on Wednesday. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record it and share it with us so we can share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.